Hello, and welcome to the Student Privacy Compass section on vulnerable students, particularly students experiencing homelessness. This is an issue I'm very passionate about, and I hope you will enjoy our module. The objectives of this module are to help you understand some of the unique privacy concerns of students experiencing homelessness, and also to share some best practices and legal obligations for protecting the privacy of students who are experiencing homelessness. As a warm up, why don't you take a few minutes to brainstorm what privacy concerns you think students and families who are experiencing homelessness might have. Think about it. Now let's share some definitions about students experiencing homelessness. Legally, homeless children and youth are any students who lack a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence. That can include a lot of different living situations. Legally, it can include students who are sharing housing of other people because they lost their housing or because of economic hardship that makes them unable to pay for rent or housing of their own. It can be students and families who are living in motels, hotels, or trailer parks due to the lack of an adequate alternative. So we're looking at the adequacy of those accommodations, understanding that many trailers are perfectly adequate for families and children to stay in, where others might be overcrowded, or they might lack some of the basic utilities or other functions necessary to be adequate housing for families and children. Youth experiencing homelessness also live sometimes in emergency shelters and transitional housing, although that's actually the least common living situation for students experiencing homelessness. Sometimes they may stay in cars, campgrounds, or bus stations, or other public areas, and sometimes they may be migratory children, or they may be unaccompanied youth, which are youth who are living on their own in a homeless situation, separate from their parents or guardians. Some key considerations for students experiencing homelessness include frequent moves between schools in the middle of a school year. They face poverty, hunger, and unmet medical needs, and also trauma and unmet, methyl, unmet mental health needs. They may have an inconsistent address or phone number that makes it difficult to stay in touch with them, and they often lack access to hygiene facilities. They may sometimes wear the same clothes repeatedly. Students experiencing homelessness can face social and behavioral challenges, embarrassment about other people finding out about their homeless status, whether that be teachers and adults at school or their peers, and concerns about sharing information to outside agencies such as child protection agencies or immigration services. Now, there are many privacy protections for students experiencing homelessness, and it's important for you to know about them. First of all, all youth experiencing homelessness are protect protected by the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act. That's a federal law that protects the educational rights of students experiencing homelessness. The McKinney-Vento Act has a lot of requirements in it that are much more stringent than the requirements in FERPA. So when in doubt, don't share. Keep information about homelessness private. The McKinney-Vento Act protects students experiencing homelessness in a number of different ways. Students can remain in a school even if their temporary living situation is in another district. They also have to have access to all the programs and services for which they are eligible. So that includes things like free school meals. It may include special education services. It may include gifted and talented services, extracurricular activities, and other programs at school. Also, every local educational agency, including charter schools, must designate a homeless liaison. That's the person in charge of making sure that schools and the district comply with the McKinney-Vento Act and that students experiencing homelessness get everything that they need. Now, McKinney-Vento also protects the privacy of students experiencing homelessness, working together with FERPA. First of all, McKinney-Vento makes it clear that any information about a youth's homelessness status or living situation is a protected educational record. And those educational records can only be released to other school officials, including teachers, if that school official has a legitimate educational interest in knowing a student is experiencing homelessness. So there might be some questions about, well, what does a legitimate educational interest really mean? 
Well, it's a tough question, particularly because we know that the McKinney-Vento Act tells us to keep this information private. So there are some easy examples, like sending an email to every teacher in the school about every student experiencing homelessness. Well, that would be a terrible violation of the McKinney-Vento Act and FERPA. Um, Even just letting a teacher know about all the students experiencing homelessness in his or her class could be a violation, because that information is private. It's information that students and parents often don't want anyone else to know because of stigma and embarrassment and fear. So it's really important to talk to students and families about who they would like their information to be shared with and why and under what circumstances, rather than just spreading that information around. Some schools do choose to share knowledge of a student's housing situation with a very limited core group of school staff. That would usually include that homeless liaison we spoke about, a school counselor, a school social worker, and maybe the classroom teacher. But if a need to discuss student concerns with other staff arises, it's a lot better to provide support without disclosing housing status by using sensitive language like, this student has a number of challenges going on outside of school right now, rather than specifically sharing personal information about the student's living situation. In addition, sharing the names and addresses of students experiencing homelessness with an outside agency requires requires parental consent or consent of the student if age 18 or over. That's true even if the motivation is helpful. Maybe we want to make sure that students can access food resources or other support in the community. But still, providing that information to outside agencies without consent would be a violation of FERPA and McKinney-Vento. It also sometimes can put student safety at risk, particularly in situations of domestic violence, um, and again, make the student feel like private information is being shared with people who really don't have the right to that information. Relatedly, schools cannot disclose information about a student's homelessness, including that they may be staying with other people in violation of lease terms or occupancy limits, to landlords, public housing agencies, or law enforcement. Again, remember, that information is a protected educational record and cannot be shared with outside agencies. Sometimes also, service providers ask for a list of students experiencing homelessness, just a list of names of all the students in the district or school experiencing homelessness. Again, you cannot share that information with outside agencies without appropriate consent from a parent or a student age 18 or older. And of course, that consent has to be compliant with all the FERPA rules about who will receive the information, what information will be shared, and for what specific purpose. Remember, when you're talking about a legitimate educational interest, keep in mind that privacy is paramount. So wanting teachers to know about all students experiencing homelessness in the school, not a legitimate educational interest. But maybe wanting to discuss a particular student's needs with a school counselor in response to a particular concern about attendance, behavior, or academic performance, that might be a valid, legitimate educational interest that might make it worth having a discussion about homelessness. But again, hopefully that's being done in some kind of a coordination and collaboration with the parent and or the student. Now, some best practices for protecting students experiencing homelessness include remembering that you don't need to know a student is experiencing homelessness in order to meet their needs and protect their privacy. One thing we know for sure is that schools are never aware of all of their students experiencing homelessness. Lots of students stay under the radar. They don't want to be discovered. They really want their information to be kept private, and schools might never find out that a student's experiencing homelessness. So that's why we suggest that you assume that every school and every classroom has students experiencing homelessness that are not known to the school. Schoolhouse Connection has some tips that you can find on our website. Some other best practices for protecting privacy include knowing that your school probably will not disclose a student's homeless status to you. So again, always keep in mind that you probably do have students in your classroom at any given time who are experiencing homelessness. A limited core group of staff, such as the homeless liaison and or school counselor might know, so those might be people that you can connect with if you're concerned about a particular student. If a student's homelessness status is disclosed to you, don't share that information with anyone. You can discuss student concerns without talking about housing status 
just by using sensitive language like this student has a number of challenges outside school right now. Now let's try an activity. Read the scenario and then decide what you think Ms. Ruper should do. A seventh grade student, Jen, in Ms. Ruper's last period art class is an outstanding artist, but never has any supplies, even a pencil. Towards the end of the school day, the student always becomes agitated and frustrated over small annoyances. Ms. Ruper has tried to talk to Jen and her mom about the supplies and how she responds, but both are always very evasive. Ms. Ruper is concerned that Jen and her mom are homeless. What should Ms. Ruper do? Click on the three options below to explore. First, ask Jen if she is homeless. Well, Ms. Ruper should not ask Jen if she's homeless because that word can trigger stigma, embarrassment, and fear. Instead, Ms. Ruper should be aware that at any time, she may have multiple students experiencing homelessness in her classroom, and she should develop equitable practices in the classroom to help all of her students have the same opportunities to participate in the art projects. For example, Ms. Ruper could develop a pencil, pen, and paper station that's available for any student to use, no questions asked. To address Jen's end of the day agitation and frustration, Ms. Ruper should work with Jen, her mother, and the school counselor or social worker to develop a structure and a plan to help her transition at the end of the school day. Another option is to ask the school counselor or social worker if she knows anything about Jen's status. Ms. Ruper can ask the person about Jen's status, but unless there is a legitimate educational interest in disclosing, they may not deem it necessary to tell her about it. The school counselor or social worker may simply say that Jen and her mother are having some difficulties outside of school at the moment. The best practice is to have as few people as possible know Jen's housing status. The school counselor and social worker and Ms. Ru Ms. Ruper can brainstorm ways together to support Jen and other students who may be struggling with lack of school supplies, trauma, or other challenges. Ask a teacher colleague who used to teach Jen if she knows anything about her situation. The previous teacher does not currently have a legitimate educational interest in knowing Jen's housing status, so it would be a privacy violation to disclose concerns about homelessness to that teacher. Ms. Roper discussing Jen's status with the teacher also might make Jen self-conscious about sharing her homelessness with her homeless liaison, and that would create a barrier to her receiving McKinney-Vento Act services, which would be a violation of the McKinney-Vento Act. Ms. Roper could discuss solving the behavior challenges Jen has at the end of the day with the teacher without discussing her housing status. Also, the teachers can discuss ways to provide access to art supplies for Jen and all the students in Ms. Roper's class.